Beautiful day in the da da hood. A beautiful day for da da ins. Okay, I just got done teaching today, so I'm just still hyped. Every time I'm like just getting done teaching, especially when the last class is like, go, 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 go. <laughs> I had a, a, I guess I filled in for another teacher. But um, I finished out a class for a girl, little girl named Fiona, and she was awesome. Her level was low, but she's 13, and so we had a lot of fun learning words and celebrating. Go, Fiona. Go, Fiona. So I'm going to help you come on board. I'm going to help you come on board the Dada team. Go, Dada. Go, Dada. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. All right. Oh, this has been long sought after, and I'm finally getting around to it. My station is a mess because we are still moving, but I'm going to help you pass that Dada interview. So several teachers have emailed me the new Dada interview preparation pack. You guys, Dada changes their interview slides like people change clothes. I know that they change their interview slides more often than I, I'm sure than any company out there. So <laughs> by the time this comes out, maybe in a couple of weeks, someone will be emailing me a new interview slide pack. But for the time being, I think this is what interview prep slide part four. I think this is the fourth time they've changed it. So. This one, if you're like, oh no, my interview is about farm animals and a beaver, this is the right video. <laughs> so here we go. All right, so here we go. The interview preparation pack. They're gonna send this to you and this is gonna be everything that you need for your Dada interview. So this will prepare you. These are all the slides and pages you'll get. So this is just gonna tell you what you're gonna get in your pack. You're gonna get everything you need. So there are several things to take note of. It's gonna last about 30 minutes. You're gonna have about 15 minutes of just the interview, the actual, you know, standard interview questions. Roughly 15 minutes, it might only be 10. So you know, 10 to 15 minutes of them asking you questions and really talk yourself up. They want to hear about your experience, um, your availability. If you have questions, ask questions there. Now, if you have questions about the slides, ask questions about the slides there. And then the, the mock slide, the mock class, 10 minutes, and they're going to role play. They're going to be the student. You're going to be the teacher. Now, in the past, it didn't used to matter whether or not you had on a light blue shirt or whatever. But now they really want to see teachers that are really invested. And so they know that if you really take the time to prepare and it's just not like, oh, let me see what happens type thing. But you're actually taking time to invest in yourself and invest in teaching, then you're more likely to stick with them you're more likely to stick around and stick with them there are teachers that have been there longer than i have i've been there for 2017 and there since 2017 there's many teachers that have been there well i didn't even know that a dada existed <laughs> in 2015 but there's teachers that's been there since then okay so they're still there and they're you know doing great they're thriving so a light blue shirt no sleeveless shirt and don't wear ladies the deep v neck or maybe fellas too don't do the the deep v neck thing unless if that's all you have then wear a shirt underneath so if you're like oh my gosh i don't want to spend money on a blue shirt i just have a deep v neck sweater wear a shirt underneath they don't want to see skin okay so that's the trick wear a shirt underneath and you'll be fine now your background in the past they did say okay a white background is okay you know as long as it looked a clean it looked like a clean background not you in the middle of the living room and they can see your sofa and tv and everything else they never want to see that not in the classroom not in an interview they never want to see your life going on in the back 
So now they do require, they say recommend, but I'm telling you, they really want to see that you have your background classroom ready. Some people come from working in other settings, and so it's easy for them. They already have this stuff because they've been on other platforms. Now, if you don't and you're brand new to teaching online, don't worry. You can get the little posters they have them at the dollar store. You don't have to fill a wall up like you see here. This is overboard. My wall will never look like this. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to say it's overboard. Excuse me. There are some teachers that like this. For me, that's too much. I would never put that much up. But it works for some people because that's what they like. I like to have like a solid color. You guys have seen my black background. That's because it's nighttime in China normally when we're teaching. And then I show my window where it's daytime here. So I sit, catty, well, not catty corner, but like right across from a river. From a Oh, good Lord. I said a river. Right across <laughs> from a window. So they see my moon and my star behind me. It's nighttime in China. And I'm like, look, it's daytime in the United States of America. And I show them my window. I normally have a map behind me or like an ABC chart. You can get a single poster. You can go to the store and buy a poster board. They cost 50 cents. I've seen them cheaper. Um, less than a dollar. Okay. And you can, if you have some really good handwriting, make a little poster for yourself. Draw a sun, some clouds, a rainbow, and write your name, Teacher LaShondra. Whatever you want to do, that would be your background. Pop it up on the wall. It looks like a classroom. There you go. Keep it simple. You don't have to do a whole lot. If you have flashcards, pop those on the wall. Put put some flashcards up, maybe A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, and maybe you cut it off there. Then put some animals or something up on your wall. Just be creative. You don't have to go and spend like $30 or anything like that trying to fix up a wall. You don't have to do that. Now, if you're hired and you're just super excited and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go. Hey, no one's discouraging you. Go all out for yourself. But some people get discouraged thinking, oh, my goodness, I have to put forth all this money and all this effort and I'm not even guaranteed the job yet. So I'm telling you, you don't. You can get everything you need in under five dollars. Now, this is how they're going to assess you. You've seen my videos, the things that they're looking for. They want you to do a warm up, greet your student, ask questions to build a bond with him or her. That's simple. As, you know, what did you do today? What did you eat today? What is your favorite color? Mm, do you like dogs or cats? Maybe you have a picture of a dog or a cat. And then you say, oh, wow, I have, well, for me personally, I have four dogs. Do you have any dogs? Oh, what color is it? What is your dog's name? That is so sweet. Are you ready today? You see how you just built a bond with your student? It's that simple. And then go into the lesson. They want to see that you warm up. Nobody wants to start a class, not even an adult. You don't want to go in a room and the teacher's like, sit down, open your book, read the first paragraph. You're going to be like, goodness gracious, chill out, right? They want to see that you can just kind of really ease into the lesson, set the tone. Really set the tone. You've heard me say this if you've watched any of my other interview videos, interview preparation videos. Use simple language. That means you are not saying things like, okay, now we are going to turn the page and look at the next thing. Just turn the page. You don't have to even say what you're going to do. And you're not going to say, would you please circle this animal on your right side? That is too much. Just say circle the beaver circle the sun and you can show it by you doing it yourself or you do it in the air showing that you're circling something use simple language don't use complex sentences it's not a platform to where they want you to show off your english or show off how many words you know they want to know how simple you could be understood so you want to make it so that they are able to understand you. It's very simple to follow. 
and is not going to frustrate the student or frustrate you because you're like, what is going on? They don't get it. I don't know what to do. Keep it simple. Engage the student. TPR, props, getting them involved. And I'm going to show examples of this. Check for understanding. You know, if you've seen any of my other videos, I recommend you watch all of them. Watch all of the other uh, preparing for your interview videos that I've made because it's all the same things that they're looking for. It's really the same things. It's just you're teaching different content, but they're looking for the same stuff in every interview, every mock demo thing that you're going to do. They're looking for the same stuff. Personalize, ask questions to help the student relate the content, correct errors and give feedback. Now, you're not going to say, nope, 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 or anything like that. If they make a mistake, then correct them gently. I'm going to give examples on how to do that. Time management. I'm talking right now because there's no one for me to talk to. So if you're talking, <laughs> I cannot hear you because it's a video. But in the classroom, you don't want to just have a lecture style class environment. You don't want to just keep talking at the student, talking at the student, talking at the student, and you're explaining stuff and explaining stuff, but you're not really interacting. You're just explaining and talking and moving around on the slide, and they're just looking at you nodding their head. They're not learning. If anything, they're trying to pick up keywords, and they're just nodding because they're trying to process what you're saying. So it needs to have balanced teacher talk time and student talk time. Preferably, you want the student talking more than you're talking. Of course, you're going to give directions. You're going to set it up and you give just set it up and give it to the student. OK, really. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, the teaching content. You're going to follow the pages and they're going to tell you in there what all the content is on each of the slides. You're going to go through as much of it as possible in your 10 minute mock class. So the mock part, as soon as the interviewer says they're ready, then you're going to have 10 minutes, 10 minutes to do everything you need to do. OK, so prepare thoroughly for both. Although you're not expected to teach every single slide, prepare every single slide slide because you don't know if the interviewer is going to ask you a question about something in particular then you want to be prepared because in actuality even in the real world you might have a lesson plan and have everything planned out but if it doesn't flow exactly on your timeline and how you want to you're going to have to move around and move according to your students in the classroom which is why a lot of these companies really like and prefer experienced teachers because Anyone who has been in a classroom knows, hey, it's not always going to go as planned. You're going to have to move around. You might have to scratch something and just make something up right there on the spot because that's the flow of the classroom. So prepare for every slide. So familiarize yourself with what's on the slide. If they absolutely have zero English, how would you deliver it? If they seem advanced, what are some things that you can point out to make it fun and challenging? Prepare yourself. Now, have props, teaching aids. I've always recommended a whiteboard. I have always recommended a whiteboard. Um, flashcards are great if you happen to have flashcards that have to do with this content that you're going to teach, then whip them out. I love whiteboards. I like to draw. If you are good at drawing, or even if you're not 100% great, you can draw some stick things. I know you can draw a little bubble head animal with a bubble body and a tail. And you can make a tail fluffy. You can make a tail flat. I know we can do that as adults. <laughs> it doesn't even have to look like a beaver. It can look like an animal with some stick legs and a flat tail and a fluffy tail. A whiteboard works wonders. Okay. And have a stuffed friend. I love having a stuffed friend. I always recommend if you don't have a puppet, get a stuffed animal. You don't have to have the same type of animal that's in your lesson. I rarely do. But if you happen to have a beaver hanging around or the farm animal one, if you have some farm animals hanging around, bust them out. Bust them out. Show off. You're this is your time to really show off. Now, they're going to show you slides. This is what the platform looks like. Now, Looking at my videos, 
you've seen a lot of my videos where I'm teaching. You can go back, look at some of my videos of where I'm teaching in the classroom. You'll see me reward stars. You see the little chat box on the side where I'm typing things in occasionally. That's what it's going to look like for you. They tell you where you're going to be in the little viewfinder and where your recruiter is going to be. You are not going to do this on Skype. You are going to do your interview in an actual Dada classroom. There's nothing special you would need to do. They will send you everything and then there will be a button for you to click when it is time for you to enter. So nothing extraordinary that you need to know or be trained on on how to enter the classroom. Everything will be sent to you. And then the teaching platform. They tell you like down below, this is going to be at the bottom of your screen. Okay, when you're inside the Dada classroom. And they tell you what each thing is. So encouraging stars, erasing, pin size. If you want to type text, that's what you would click on. You click on the slide, a text box will appear. You can type in text to turn the student's pin on and off. So remember, if you tell them circle something, make sure their pin is turned on. Okay, make sure it's turned on. So those are the little just labels on what's going on at the bottom of the screen. And they send that to you. It's going to be in your packet. Now, lower level, the objective is to have them be able to identify a cow, a sheep, a hen, a horse, and say the sentence, it is a cow, it is a sheep. Higher level, there's your objective. You want them to be able to use sequencing first, next, then last. Basically, these are your focuses for each of these. This is your focus, and the keywords carry in flat. Now, let's go on first to the lower level. Okay, so now we are going to start off with on the farm. So this first slide, you'll see it here and you'll say, okay, this is just the, what, the cover or the title. So you will. Now, this is where you're going to do your greeting and warming up with the student. You're gonna start here. So don't skip over it because this could be fresh material. Hello. My name is LaShandra. What is your name? Oh, nice to meet you. And then they might just look at you like, because you're saying nice to meet you. And I still do it with the little ones. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And if they still don't know, this is why I recommend a stuffed animal friend. Hello. Nice to meet you. High five. Good. Just be patient. If they're not understanding what you're saying, then you say, you are doing good. I'm happy. Are you happy? And that's another thing you can do. Instead of going into colors, then ask them, are you happy or sad? I'm happy. Are you happy? And they might say, happy. <gasps> I'm happy. And you that's you trying to get them to say, I'm happy. Good job. Yay. Are you ready? Let's go. So make it your own. I'm just showing you how I would do it and how I do it when I'm teaching it. I do this on the farm one all the time because I get this trial all the time, <laughs> all the time. So those are some things I do in the beginning, just some ideas to bounce around. So warm up, This that's all part of a warm up. Let's go. Don't spend more than one to a minute and a half. That's still a lot. But if you're getting close to like, your time is a ticking and you're still on this first slide, you're spending too much time, okay? because you're not able to show off the rest of your teaching skills. So in the classroom, it's okay. 
because we go at the student's pace. But for the purpose of the mock interview, you don't want to rush them, make it natural, but don't waste too much time. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. That's okay. If you still didn't get them to say your name right, they're not saying full sentences, still tell them they're doing a good job and move on. You're doing great because they just want to see how patient are you? How are you able to teach it? How do you explain? That's what they want to see. And then remember, classroom management, effectiveness. They're looking at that too. Now this one, the first lesson slide, that's why it says, hi, mm, what animals do you like? You're supposed to plug in their name there. If they never given, if they had never given you their name, then that's okay. Hello, what animal? do you like? Use TPR. Now you can circle. Oh, what is it? And if they can tell you bird, yes, bird. And then maybe circle the next one. Don't even say anything. Circle it with your pen on the screen. Dog, good. Rabbit, yes. Cat, yes, good. What animal do you like? And then they might say, uh, a rabbit. I like a rabbit. I like the rabbit. Get them to say it in a sentence. If you couldn't and they were not successful, they say, I like rabbit. Good. I like the rabbit. I like the, the rabbit. I like the rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. Yes, I like the rabbit. Good. High five. Bloop, 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 bloop. See, you're correcting them, you're directing them, but you're not going to spend five minutes for perfection. If you've corrected them, I say don't do a max of three times because a lot of times they get in the start looking at their parents. And these recruiters, they might start acting like some of these kids, okay? Exactly like that. And they just start. They Maybe they might be a little naughty. I like rabbit. You say, I like the rabbit too. Go to the next one. Just go ahead and go. <laughs> they want to see your patient. Are you going to be like, are you going to freeze? Are you going to just keep pushing them to keep doing it over and over again and make them explode? Go to the next one. Then now the next slide. Now I'm not trying to make you worry. They're not always difficult students, but I have had some that was like, oh my goodness, they were rude children or they act like they didn't speak any English it was so hard I just want to prepare you for the, the least ideal all the way to the most ideal okay because I like to keep it real with you and yeah it's not always gonna be easy they're not gonna always act like the easiest student that you could get and in in the real classroom you're gonna get some that you're just gonna be like all right timer speed up <laughs> And you're going to get some, you're like, oh, I hope that student becomes mine. They were so adorable. But you know, we, we just love them all. We love them all. And we're going to get paid to teach them all, okay? So, now this next slide where you see that, nay, cluck, cluck, moo. And so when you're doing the sounds, you don't have to spend a lot of time here. So, I like to go through. Each one. Bah! And I circle. <gasps> if you even have your phone and you have the sound set, your phone could be a prop, like a sound prop. Don't You don't have to be like, you have to be savvy now. You can't be trying to figure things out and have your phone like this all up in the screen. Have it off screen and have it ready to go. Bah! <gasps> 
And then the next one, nay. And maybe they'll say it with you, nay. Oh, what is it? Moo. Moo. And maybe they'll do it with you. Click, click, click. I mean, I'm talking like 30 seconds. It don't even have to be that long. 30 seconds, no more than a minute on this slide. A minute is probably too long to spend on a slide that you're just doing sound. Now this next part, this is where you will actually see that they're showing you two animals at a time. Moo, a cow. So they have the picture here so you don't need a prop. There's the picture, do TPR and have them repeat a cow. Sometimes they don't want to do animal sounds, that's okay. A cow. Good. <laughs> Circle, underline, however you want to do it. A sheep. Yes, good. And then to reinforce, because you're checking comprehension. See how we do? Go back to the cow. <gasps> what is it? And they're just like, they might say, what is it? And repeat everything you say. A cow. Good. And then if you see that they're repeating, use your stuffed animal friend. This is why I recommend a stuffed animal friend. <gasps> oh, what is it? A sheep. Yes, a sheep. Good. What is it? A sheep. A sheep, yay, good. Then go back, if you have time, if you're making good time, circle the cow, a cow, a sheep, yay, good. Have them repeat after you, okay? Now, you're gonna go to the next one. You see, there's the little cow behind the bush, moo, what? is it i always like to underline what is it you just practiced on the slide before and they might say what is it if they repeat after you then say a cow yes what is it a cow yes good <gasps> and then go to the next one it is a cow. Yes, it is a cow. Sometimes you got to break it up. Sometimes these little ones have a hard time saying, it is a cow. So you might say, it is a cow. Yes, it is a cow. Now, if you have color flashcards and you wanted to bust up the colors what color is it what color is it circle the cow you can say what color is the cow what color is it you're not going to get points taken off because you're not saying it verbatim i know companies that do you didn't say it like this we don't say it like that and you get points taken off dada is not like that what color Yes, white. Good. And maybe you color, circle the black. Black. I hope you see how we're making good time here. Ba. Hmm. What is it? Use TPR. What is that? Look. Circle it. It's already circled in red, but bring their attention to it because you don't know what they're focusing on. Circle it some more. Draw arrows to it. Hmm, they might say a cow. <gasps> yes! Wow! A cow! Good job! Or not a cow, a sheep. <laughs> a sheep. So they're saying a sheep. Good job. I'm, thinking, I'm still having cow on the brain. So then the, you see it is a sheep it is a sheep the same thing that you did with the cow what color is it circle ba look 
It is a sheep. You're using TPR. You're making it fun. You're making it interesting. A sheep. Yay. High five. Or whatever your celebration is. You might do high fives. If you wanted to give rewards, then every two slides or so, for the purpose of the interview, you're only going to do it for 10 minutes. So you don't want to fill up your time with doing rewards. You don't have to explain these rewards. I have these little emoji pins. <gasps> yes, good job. Whoop. Yay. Good. And I just put it on myself. You don't have to be like, you get this, this face right here because you did a good job. Keeping it simple. They see that they did good. You gave them a thumbs up and now they got something. They can put that together. Now you see how it says read after me and all that. You don't have to say read after me. You don't have to do that. It's really just telling you that's what type of a slide this is. It's a read after me slide. You're going to teach this the same way that you taught the one with the cow and the sheep. You're going to do it the same way. So do that. If you have props for these, pull them out, pull out the pictures. If you have the little, if you're going to use sound as a prop, then get the sound going and get them saying, a horse. Yes, a horse. Yes, celebrate them. And then before you move on to the higher, then give them another reward. However it might be. It might be just a little start. And you, maybe you have a star wand and you're rewarding them a star as well. Maybe that's your reward for today. That's okay. Now we're going to go to higher level. Now with this higher level, I'm going to incorporate, I'm going to go a little faster, and I'm going to incorporate my rewards in with the teaching so you can see. So with the lower level, I went a little slower and broke it down for you slide by slide. I'm still going to explain but I'm going to just pick it up a little notch so that you can really see how it flows. Now, do you really want to see that you're prepared? Don't have to try to scurry around and get things. Have everything ready to go. Have your workspace organized and ready to go. No, they're not going to see your desk and all that, but have everything organized to where you can reach it when you need it, as you need throughout the class. So, here we go. I'm going to start. So you see the first slide, a tell of a tale, and it says trial class in the corner. So a tell of a tale. This is where you're going to do your greeting and your warm up. Hello, my name is LaShondra. What's your name? Oh, hello, Jackie. Nice to meet you. Jackie, how old are you? Oh. Wow, 10? 10 years old. Ooh, oh, my dog. <laughs> I have four dogs. My dog is 10 years old. Ooh. And see how I'm making it relatable? Do you like dogs? They might say, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I love them. Are you ready? If they say, no, I don't, then you can say, what animal do you like? What animal? At this level, at the higher level, they should be able to name a animal. Cat. They, they might say, I like cat. Then correct them gently. Oh, you like cats. Yes. And since you're having a conversation, you don't have to make them say, I like cats. You don't have to do that. You're just correcting them gently and non-aggressively, okay? When you get used to it and you're a pro at it, you'll learn how to correct them and type it in the text box. I like to say, oh, okay, I like cats, wow. And I type, I like cats in the little chat box so they can see it, they heard me say it, they know I corrected them. Because at this higher level, they're mature enough to understand most of the time what's going on without you saying, I like cats, okay, you say. You're having a, a just a gentle warm-up conversation. All right, are you ready? Let's go. Look. Hmm, what do you see? What is that? They might say, I don't know. And then I'll underline the word beaver. Beaver. Yes, 
It is a beaver. 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 Yeah, it's a beaver. It's a beaver. Good. Okay. Long ago, there lived, and now here I'm underlining, a beaver named Ray. Oh, look. Ray. Good. Okay. You read. And then I'll draw a bracket around the next part. And I'm listening. Ray was quite proud of his thick, nice, his nice thick tail. So they're reading that. Oh, so how was Ray's tail? How was Ray's tail? And they might look at you confused, maybe. Sometimes in higher level, it doesn't mean they understand everything that you're saying. But they... Are the, the lower levels are too easy, so this might be just at that challenging level for them in many cases, or they could be just fluent in this. Go off of your recruiter. How was Ray's tail? And then if they misspeak, then help them with pronunciation. If they made errors in their reading, this will be the time where you would underline or circle. Okay, good. This word, quite. Ray was quite proud of his nice thick tail you did good you did good and then give him a reward you can give him a reward anything all right so get them to answer that you read this and i'll put a bracket around what i want them to read and i'll have them read oh look Oh no! What happened? You see how you're checking comprehension? They just read it. You're asking them what happened? And they should be able to tell you the tree. Help them explain if they need to. The tree fell on their tail. Oh, ouch! Ouch! Look! I have, I have my cat. And look, there's my cat's tail. Oh no! Hmm, how many times did Ray chop the tree? Chop. See, I'm using TPR. How many times? And if they're thinking about it, hmm, then underline that answer. Ray chopped a big tree eight. Maybe you circle the number eight. Eight times. Yes, yes. He chopped the tree eight times. Eight times. Yes. So then have them repeat that. Help them explain. You are doing great. Ha <laughs> ha. I am so happy. Good job. Very good. Good job. Oh, my tail is flat, Ray wailed. Oh, no. You read this. Now they're going to read the next part. The sun said a flat tail would help you swim fast. Hmm. Do you like to swim? Oh, good. So look. What does wailed mean? What does wailed mean? Cried? Oh, or smiled. And then underline the sentence, that first sentence. What does wailed mean? And have them explain. Now, you may not get through every slide, but that's okay. Prepare like you're ready to go through it. If the interview cut it, okay, that's enough. You did great. Then end it there. You did wonderful. Keep going. If they don't say anything, keep going. Because they're just going to be pretending and they're going to be taking notes. They'll cut you off. Don't just say, all right. That was 10 minutes. Let them stop you. <laughs> they they know what they're doing. They could be enjoying it or they maybe there's something that they're looking for. And then they want you to keep going until they hear or see what they're looking for. So now, you see how I'm just proceeding to the next one? His friends came. You read that. Hmm, wow. Did 
Did Ray swim slow? Did he swim slow? No. How did he swim? Yes. He swam fast like a fish. Good. Yes. Oh. Good job. <laughs> Good. Okay. Who were Ray's friends? Now, don't forget, you're rewarding stars, too. So, reward stars. I Rule of thumb, you have 10 minutes. I would reward a star, you get five stars. I would reward a star every minute and a half, mentally thinking. Minute and a half, ding, reward a star. They do a good job, ding, you only get five stars. It doesn't reset, you don't get extra stars. And you only get five stars, it only dings five times. <laughs> but you can do it in between, so where it looks like they're always getting something, star, Reward, star, reward, star, reward. So maybe 30 seconds in, they're getting a star. Then another 30 seconds, they're getting a reward. 30 seconds, a star. 30 seconds, a reward. A, a minute later, a star. 30 seconds, a reward. They're always getting something. You know, however you want to do that, to spread it out. I'm just exaggerating the times. But spread it out. You have stars. You can do rewards. That shows that you are a very versatile teacher. So ask questions. That's checking comprehension. It's not verbatim. It's not like some of these companies where you have to read everything verbatim or you fail. Now order the pictures. Okay. Hmm. What happened first? Underline first. Next. Underline next. Then. And last. Hmm. Can you... Tell me, what happened first? They might circle, and this is how you want to do it. You can have them write the number, and they can say, first, his tail was thick. Or like, or they say, this first. Like, yes, help them, re help them word it. First, his tail was thick. Yes. You don't have to retell the whole story verbatim. The key points. First, his tail was thick because remember the objective is for them to be able to use first, next, then last. Yes, first, his tail was thick. Hmm, what happened next? Next. Mm. next. Yes, good. The tree fell on his tail. Ouch. Good, good. Now, your prop, you can even have your whiteboard out. If you have your whiteboard, you can draw. Ouch! So, like I said, you can do anything on a whiteboard. Maybe you have him right here, and his tail is thick. Yay! So, look, the thick tail. And, oh, no, the tree. The tree fell on his tail. Oh, it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> you see I'm using my marker you could do that on the whiteboard then you wouldn't need you know a whole lot of extra props if you have the stuffed animal use the stuffed animal so that's how you're going to sequence then you see how they show it in the correct order first next last then last so then yes First, the tail was thick. Next, help them. Maybe they can tell you on their own. If they're struggling, then help them. But give them the opportunity to where you're offering them the platform first to speak. Give them the turn first. And if you need to assist, assist. And assist in complete sentences, okay? If they're speaking improperly and they say, first tail thick, you don't say, yes, first tail thick. That is not teaching them proper English. Even if they're struggling to use articles, that's okay. You're still going to speak using articles. First, the tail was thick. Or first, his tail. You can use pronouns. Pronouns are articles. Sometimes they omit them. And you just put them in there. You want to encourage that. And then there you go. That's how you would teach these slides. Okay, now we have the, ch the sh cheat <laughs> sheet. Try to say that fast five times. Cheat, 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 cheat. The cheat sheet. 
So these are the tips for rocking your mock class, okay? Read through these because this is everything that I've gone through on all of the, the you know, the interview demo videos that I've made in the past. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, only this time different content. Now, keep in mind, they want you to teach at least, look at number seven, teach at least five pages in the mock class. So you need to teach at least five pages, 10 minutes, at least five pages. You might not get through all of it in 10 minutes, not at all, but they want to see how well you teach. So pace yourself. Don't find yourself spending too much unnecessary time on a slide. It's different from being in the classroom. Yes, in the classroom, you take your time, you make sure they fully understand, go by their pace. And that's what the parents want. The parents want comprehension. In the mock class, pace yourself. You got to get at least five of these pages done. You don't want to stick on one slide because the, the interviewer is not saying the correct articles or they're not pronounce, you know, pronouncing certain words right. Correct them, yes. Offer a correction no more than three times. And that. then say you don't need to teach all the slides and stick to teaching the objectives. Remember the objective for each slide. And I go over that right before we start. So stick to teaching the objectives. You don't have to teach all the extra and have them master saying their name or listing the colors. We don't need mastery on that. All right. I am rooting for you.